Hello and welcome to our service recorded here at St Mary's Church, Masson. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word, to ask his forgiveness of our sins and to seek his grace that through his son Jesus Christ we may ask for God's forgiveness we say together father eternal giver of life and grace we have sinned against you and are against our neighbor in thought in what we have thought in what we have said and done through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed, and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who, with heartfelt repentance and true faith, turn to him, have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Lord, our Lord. Amen. Merciful God. Your Son came to save us and bore our sins on the cross. May we trust in your mercy and know your love, rejoicing in the righteousness that is ours through Jesus Christ our Lord. We have our first reading. Our first reading comes from the letter from Paul to the Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarrelling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while, we, while the weak only eat vegetables. Those who eat must not, must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat. For God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall. And they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe it in the honour of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honour of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honour of the Lord. Give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from the Gospel according to St Matthew. For this reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and, as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children, and all his possessions, and payment to be made. 
So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow prisoners saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their lord all that had happened. Then his lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave! I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his lord handed him over to be tortured until he should pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will do also to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Eighty years ago, on the 14th of November 1940, the city of Coventry was hit by German bombs. Much of the city was destroyed and the cathedral, medieval in origin, was left in ruins. In the days that followed, two powerful symbols came out of the ashes of that ruined cathedral. A couple of burnt roof beams had fallen into the shape of the cross in the rubble. These were later bound and placed where the altar had been, and three medieval roof nails were formed into a cross. The provost at the time, Nick Howard, wrote on the ruined walls of the chancel, Father, forgive. At that time, he made a commitment not to seek revenge, but to strive for forgiveness and reconciliation with all who were responsible. That year, the Christmas Day service was broadcast from the ruins, and Howard declared that after the war was over, everyone should work together to build a kinder and more Christ-like world. The cross of nails, as those fused medieval nails became called, became called quickly, became a sign and symbol of friendship and hope in the years following the war. Coventry became twinned with Dresden, another city which was destroyed by bombs. And in 1947, a cross of nails was presented to St. Nicholas Church, Kiel, Germany, a symbol of peace between former enemies. This was the founding of the ministry that Coventry Cathedral has become world famous for. That is a ministry of forgiveness and reconciliation. Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury, was once the canon for reconciliation at Coventry Cathedral, and for him the cross of nails was an important tool in his ministry. He presented these crosses to places all over the world where forgiveness, healing and reconciliation was and still is needed. Talking in 2016, he said, I presented these crosses in places like Bujurumbura in Burundi, to this day, that cross remains within the sound of gunfire. The symbol is not one of ivory tower isolation. It speaks into the very heart of the wars, torture and terror that so fill worlds. This leads me on to the reading for today. And Peter talking to Jesus. Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive him? As many as seventy seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Now for Jews, seven was the perfect number. It was the number of completeness and perfection. So when Jesus expands that number to seventy-seven times, he is saying that the number of times that you need to forgive someone is endless. There is no set number of times to forgive. Jesus goes on to talk about the parable of un the unjust slave. This is an example of how God treats us. Again and again we can come to God who forgives the things we do. 
But if we do not show that same love towards each other, how do you think God feels? We are clearly told that we are not to repay evil for evil. And I think that goes for forgiveness as well. When we forgive, it needs to be a true forgiveness. That means a forgiveness that comes from the heart, not merely words that have been said. Sometimes symbols are needed. Sometimes we need to set aside time or a special place to start to sort out what has gone before. Reconciliation is part of the forgiving and healing process. In the act of reconciliation, you are not seeking to solve anything that has happened, but you are trying to transform what will happen in the future. You are trying to find some common ground where you can move forward from. This does not mean we always have to agree with, it, with each other, but we do need to learn to disagree well. For us as Christians, it is about taking a risk. It is about doing what Jesus did and what he called his disciples and us to do, love our enemies. It is, I think, the hardest commandment that we are called to follow. It is fitting, therefore, that the lasting symbol from the bombing of Coventry Cathedral is the cross of nails. Nails hold things together, but they were, of course, the items that were nailed into Christ when he was being put upon the cross. And the words that came from his mouth were those very special words of Father, forgive them. At the bottom of your service book, you will see you have a picture of the cross of nails. And I'm now going to invite you to, hop, to look at that picture and ask God to help you have the courage to forgive those who have hurt you or to pray for a situation in the world where forgiveness and reconciliation is desperate. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So we now come to our time of intercession, our time of praying for ourselves, the world, and those whom we love. Let us pray. Eternal God, your Son is King and Head of the Church. We pray for your people across the world, that what is divided by doctrine or race, by class or creed, may be united in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, your Son is ruler of nations. We pray for those in authority, that those who lead us may work for peace and reconciliation, and that by your wisdom and their vision, the world may reflect your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, your Son is the Prince of Peace. We pray for a peaceful world where children grow up without fear and security rests on trust rather than threats and where nations fight against poverty rather than against each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Eternal God, your Son is the healer of our sickness. We pray for those who are ill or who are passing through times of testing, that they may know the power of Christ to sustain them. We hold a moment's pause to allow space to pray for those who have asked for our prayer.
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Eternal God, your Son is the resurrection and the life. Confirm our faith in the communion of saints, that, inspired by all who have gone before us in faith, we may seek the things which are above, where Christ reigns, and live on earth the life of heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you, were call, you called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ reconciling the world to yourself. Help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you through him who has lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we now pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God. In one body by the cross, we meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Thank you for joining us today in this service. We hope that you will enjoy our other services that are listed on our YouTube channel. And hopefully you can, we will all be able to meet again soon. And so the blessing. May God, who in Christ has reconciled all things in heaven and earth, grant us grace to walk the path of forgiveness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace. Mend what is broken. Unite what is divided. Live the gospel. In the name of Christ. Amen.